The views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. All right, coming up on this edition of today's verdict, the plastic bag ban signed by Governor Andrew Cuomo in 2019 will come into effect March 1st of this year. New York City will become the second state to ban plastic bags, California being the first. Well, according to the New York City Department of Sanitation, residents use more than 10 billion single-use carry-out bags every year, which racks up more than 12 million annually in disposal costs. How will you be impacted, and what do you need to know when you're out grocery stopping, shopping? We have two experts who will guide us through the new legislation, and as you can see, we have much to get to, so stay tuned. Today's verdict starts right now. All right. Hello. Welcome to today's, today's Verdict, the live and interactive show that gives you your legal rights and options. I'm your host and trial attorney, David Lesh. Today's Verdict is always encouraging you to stay connected. Make sure to tweet us at Today's Verdict and hashtag Ask Today's Verdict if you have a question. Also, make sure to like us and follow us on Facebook at Today's Verdict and check us out at bronxnet.tv. Well, with the signing of the plastic bag ban by Andrew Cuomo, several lawmakers have mixed opinions on the new ban. Well, Assemblyman Charles Barron of District 60 said that the fee will be a financial burden on the people of his district. Others are in support of the ban, like Assemblyman Jeffrey Dinowitz, who is here to tell us more about the ban and what he has done to help his community with the upcoming change. Assemblyman, thanks for being here. It's great to be here. Uh, listen, most people, I would think, are opposed to plastics in the environment. Uh, tell us a little bit about the history of the bill, and which is now law, and tell me why, uh, why you sponsored it. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, f first, people should remember, and those of a certain age will remember, we didn't always have those plastic bags. When I was growing up, we had paper bags. No one ever thought about plastic bags. We got along just fine without those bags. We managed to survive. I remember I, was, I would always have to fold them up when my mother used to take them back from Dan Supreme or whatever it was. But yeah. there did come a point, I guess it became cheaper to manufacture plastic and would cut the costs and therefore we have these plastic bags all over the place. But they're not too good for the environment, are they? They're horrible. The, the only good thing about those bags is that many of us, maybe most of us, use them for our garbage, for our kitchen garbage. But when you look around and see all of the plastic bags on the streets, in the trees, in streams, all, all over the place, uh, it's one of the biggest forms of pollution that we have. So, not, so several years ago, many of us came to the conclusion that this had to stop. Well, was there... A a general consensus? Well, because now you have some regulations that are coming out that are trying to really, you know, chop away a little bit at, at what was considered to be um, film in terms, of, in terms of the bag itself. It's very thin. It should be thicker or can use reusables. When this was really first discussed, it seemed like maybe more of a, like a no-brainer, but it seems to have been taken up some kind of controversy now. Well, th there's always been controversy, okay. the, the, uh, the, the, and there was a long time that it took before there was a consensus that we should do this. At some point, the city of New York passed a s plastic bag ban, but I always felt their bill was uh, defective. Uh, it allowed the supermarkets to make a windfall profit uh, on that issue. It didn't seem fair. The state legislature overturned that ban, and some people were very angry. But ultimately, within a couple of years, we passed our own bill, which was an out-and-out -out ban on the plastic bags in supermarkets. It wasn't a ban on all plastic, but specifically those bags that, uh, that you get in the supermarket that uh, usually they, they, they fall apart, they have holes, they have to double them up. Uh, but when you, if you buy enough groceries in the supermarket, you can end up taking on 20 of those bags. Now, how does it work in terms of you being charged for, let's say, pl 
paper or anything uh, in terms of a five cent fee or how does that work? You go to the supermarket, they're charging you now to use paper? People don't really understand that. Well, but part of the legislation that was passed banning the plastic bags also allowed municipalities to opt in to charging a fee, a five cent fee for the paper bags. And New York City opted in to do that. The money for the, that, the, that the stores get from those paper bags in part goes to helping lower income people purchase those reusable canvas bags. So it's as, which is why I have to disagree with my colleague that you mentioned earlier, uh, because people who are low income can get uh, the, you know, the reusable bags and not have to pay. So you, all right, them. so as long as you bring a reusable bag into the particular grocery store, there's no fee, there's no five cent fee. You not take your bag, least. you take it out, you bring it back. Not in the least. And th those bags are available all over. You go to street fairs, you go to community events, they're always giving out the bags. I myself have a very hefty supply because I've been saving them up sure. for this very reason. Uh, I, I used to put those bags anyway, even before the ban. You know, but here's the thing. For, for every, every winner, I'm not saying there's a loser because I don't really think there's ever a loser with someone in terms of saving the environment, but there is always an industry that's affected uh, as a result of not being able to manufacture something that was going to their bottom line, and that would be the plastic industry or anyone. But is there any way or anything you can do to try and alleviate those like the person who we discussed a second ago in terms of uh, also in the legislature in terms of trying to let them see that it's to everyone's benefit it's not just a financial benefit it's to everyone's benefit if we can just get, eliminate all plastic bags well I'm not particularly worried about the fate of, of those manufacturers who after all manufactured something which was very bad for our environment it's just bad. Uh, I mean, you go out in the street, look at a tree. How many bags are just hanging in those trees? I always uh, say that there are some trees have more bags than leaves hanging from them. They're disgusting. It's yeah. enough already. So yeah, w will some of the manufacturers lose out? Yes, but they can also shift some of their manufacturing to other products. Well, how do you feel about some of the regulations that they're trying to, to come out with to you know, tinker a little bit with with the upcoming law that's going into effect, or what is it, in like a week and a half it's going yeah. into effect, which suggests that as long as the bag has a certain thickness, it's not really a plastic bag anymore, it's something else, and therefore that type of bag, or whatever you want to call it, should be exempt. Well, I don't want to see this uh, bill, this law, watered down. Um, I, but I, during the whole discussion of this, I always said that there were pla really bad plastic bags and some that aren't so bad. Like when you go to Stu Leonard's, they have plastic bags that are very sturdy. Those are not the ones that were ending up in trees. It was those very light, fluffy bags that were really the worst of the worst. And uh, th those are the ones in particular that I think we're going to benefit from not having around. And they're also very tough to recycle from what I'm told. They they get stuck in the machinery when they're, anyone's trying to just to mash them together. Uh, they're very difficult. But I guess the, the other side is, all right, well, if you're going to ban thicker bags as well, well, what, what about bottles? What about all these different things that we walk into a supermarket, we walk down to Whole Foods, Foods or whatever, and you see all this plastic, is it all supposed to be? Why bags? Why just bags? And that's, I guess, I, what I'm asking. Well, f first of all, uh, uh, I, there are other things we should look at. Yeah. Um, we have deposits on bottles. Uh, some bottle, some the beverages you buy are in plastic. There are some that are in glass or cans. Um, but the plastic bags, the, the, that was the most egregious example of something that's really filthying up our streets and, and every place, really. It, it was just all over the place. Yeah. As you said, there was like tens of billions. And it was too much. So people... People are going to have to get used to not having them, and I think people will do just fine. Listen, people have gotten used to a lot of things uh, that you know that they weren't used to wearing seatbelts. Now they wear seatbelts. I mean, you, right. you kind of move slowly. Uh, let's talk a little bit about other stuff that's going on in the district. Tell me what you what you have going on. Some stuff that you're you're working on. Well, we are working on a number of things. Recently, we had a big victory. The uh, the MTA backed down on a plan to eliminate significant portions of our express bus service in the North Bronx. Um, w there was much community protest uh, when they announced 
uh, the elimination of a lot of the express bus runs. Uh, and it's a long way to go from the, from the, you know, from the Bronx all the way into Manhattan or a different place of the city. Right. I mean, the express bus really is a lifeline for a lot of people, especially for, who have to get to work by right. 9 o'clock in the morning and the subway service may not be around. Subways are far. Not yeah. everybody is near a subway. That's right. So when, when, the, when we first heard about this, our, our office, along with my, uh, some of my colleagues, we organized a town hall meeting. On a few days' notice, we brought out over 500 people to a meeting. The MTA saw this huge turnout, and I think that was one of the contributing factors to them backing off the plan. They, they at least temporarily backed off the plan. Okay. They may bring it up again next year, but it was it was a big victory. People were really upset, and you know the MTA would say, "Well, the, the ridership is low during the afternoons and the evenings. We don't need those buses." But and it's true, the ridership is lower, but for the people who use them, it's very important. It's very important. You know, and we're trying to make such a dent into. Um, ways to get around the city, we, we, you know, whether it's bike lanes or express lanes. We're trying to help people get, get around. We want to make mass transit exactly. more available to everybody. So, I mean... It the idea of taking away a mass transit option when we are very much trying to discourage people from driving into Manhattan with a car made no sense at all. Completely agree. Uh, anything else? What else? Well, we had another recent victory, hopefully not a temporary victory. The city had this ridiculous plan to empty out the northern basin of the Jerome Park Reservoir, one of the most beautiful resources in our community. And um, a lot of people in the community worked very hard, community groups, to oppose this. Uh, after a meeting that I organized in Albany with a state agency and, and some of our uh, leaders from the Bronx Council for Environmental Quality, they said that this plan has to be pulled back. Uh, you know, what the ultimate result is, I don't know, but I do know that at least temporarily we've prevented a really bad thing from happening in our community. And, you know, I mean, when people work together, we can get things done. You know, a big night tonight, some debates and some interesting things to watch in terms of politics. It should be fun. I think it's an interesting time um, to be watching this kinds of uh, um, happenings, in our, in, whether you're a Democrat or Republican. Um, I think it's exciting. And uh, I don't know I if you have any so. thoughts about tonight or what the debates may hold or... Well, I, I look Gloves are going to come off. What do you think? You know what? When you're running for president... Got to get ready for you it. You got to right? be prepared for a lot of incoming fire. And if you can't take the heat on a debate, you certainly can't take the heat as president. So uh, any, uh, I'm sure all the candidates will be fine. I think most of those candidates are, are good candidates, uh, most of whom I'd be happy to support, to support. against um, him. Um, and uh, <laughs> just say him. I, I can't People say, mention the I, I can't say the word. I get it. It's, it's I, just I, horrible. Listen, a lot of people um, feel the same way. I, I think that uh, as you know, people say, why are there so many Democrats running? Why can't they just pick a candidate? Well, that's not how the process no. works. At some point, there that's will it. be a candidate, and then hopefully people will get behind that well, I'm, candidate. I'm certainly watching tonight. And listen to somebody, thank you for being here. Thank you. All right. We have to take a quick break, but don't worry. We'll be back with more Today's Verdict right after this. The Essence here, right on the set of the The Essence Show. Please tune in each and every Wednesday at 9 p.m. File Study 4, Optimum 68, and live streaming BronxNet.tv. Or you better get in line. We built a media network for you. Bronxnet TV. Come learn in your new state-of-the-art studios at Lehman College. At Mercy College. And coming soon to the South Bronx in the Hub. Inspire with your stories, culture, history. Your Bronx on Bronxnet. Engage with us. Connect with us at your channels and at Bronxnet.tv. Learn. Engage. Inspire. Bronxnet TV. From the Bronx to the world. <laughs> Bronxnet.
All right, welcome back to today's verdict. I'm your host, David Lesh. We are always encouraging you to stay connected. Tweet us at today's verdict. The New York State Department of Environmental Conservation has now finalized regulations for the plastic bag ban. We're here to tell us more about this. We have Executive Director Peter Iwanowitz from the Environmental Advocates of New York via Skype. Peter, how are you? I'm doing well, thanks, David. Thanks uh, for having me. You know, you thought, th well, I thought this would be fairly easy. You put a law into effect, banning plastic bags, we're done, everyone goes home happy. Well, maybe not the people who make plastic bags, but everybody else seems to be happy. Tell me how all of this ended up becoming a big problem, and now some, some people are trying to really chop away at what is supposed to go into effect next week. Yeah, so so thanks for having this segment. I think it's really important to talk about this. I mean, um, the first thing I want people to know is the plastic bag ban that takes effect March 1st is going to dramatically reduce the amount of pollution that is going to be in our environment. It will reduce the chemicals going in to make the bags. It will reduce the pollution because a lot of these bags end up as litter. So that's going to be a really big thing. So while there's you know, a little bit going on in terms of like which bags are exempt and how to sort of define them and stuff. What's really important, and I don't want people to lose sight of the fact, is that there's going to be a statewide ban on plastic bags given away by the, the typical grocery stores or convenience stores or pharmacy chains they go to. All right, let's take us back to April at least. All right, it wasn't that long ago. And it really, it looked like there was a consensus at the time um, to remove these flimsy types of bags that you will end up getting at the grocery store, correct? When did all of a sudden it become so imperative that regulations were then brought into effect? When did this, when did this start? In November, or December, all of a sudden, it, right when it's ready? I mean, it's only a week away. Yeah, it was about six months after the law became effective last spring. Um, and, and part of it is it started in a really messy process as they included this plastic bag ban as part of the state budget negotiations. You have this big negotiation of a $170 billion budget, and they slid in some policy stuff into the, the discussions. And they you know, didn't have enough time and energy to really focus in on a lot of the definitions. And people started to become critical of whether this would ban the ability for stores to sell reusable bags that are a lot heavier and thicker with handles, but are, some of them made of plastic material. So rather than coming back to the legislature and asking for the change in law, they went to the Cuomo administration and said, well, why don't you have the agency issue some regulations that would redefine some of the things in law? And that, that really shouldn't have happened. They should have come back with a change in law and brought it to the legislature beginning in January when they arrived here um, the first week of January. Right, it's really a back door when you think about it. So, uh, but let's, let's get to the heart of the matter. It seems to be the flimsiness of the plastic is what is determining whether it should be banned or not banned. Am I correct? In other words, if you're getting, to, getting a thicker um, type of bag, well, it's really becoming more of a reusable kind of bag because you're not reusing little flimsy bags, and therefore that should be exempt. What, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I think that's what the attempt was to do, but the law is plain. The law says no plastic, and to have an environmental agency come in and try to tinker with that in the regulatory space, well, that's just wrong. Um, if they wanted to change the definition of what was banned, then they should have gone back to the legislature and asked for a change in law. So it does relate to the thickness and whether the reusable bags that we want people to bring are made out of cloth um, or heavier sort of woven um, materials, which is sometimes plastic. Um, and if that's the real issue, then there's a way to deal with it with a slight change in law, not this expansive definition about thickness and not, and uh, these bags might be exempt, and these ones not. I mean, they opened up a lot of confusion with these regulations where you, it didn't need to be. Could you do me a favor? Can you walk me through the, the, the financial uh, burden on the consumer? I'm, I'm a little confused about that. Who pays what if they're not using a plastic bag, if they want a paper bag? I don't really understand that. Yeah, and it's going to get really confusing depending on where you live. So, you know, let's look at New York City. New York City did opt in, as Assemblyman Dinowitz said, they opted into charging consumers for paper bags, as the law allows. But if you go just outside of New York City, 
Um, and my father-in-law lives three doors away from New York City in his home in, in Nassau County. He will not be charged for paper bag in Nassau County. But if he crosses the street to buy <laughs> uh, groceries in Queens, he will be charged for the paper bag. So there's that confusion that, that should have been dealt with statewide. And so what it is is there will be a statewide plastic bag ban. In, in those communities like where I live in Albany County and in New York City where they've instituted local laws to have a fee charged for paper bags, it's designed to have a, a, a cooperative relationship. You ban plastic and you put a fee on paper to truly encourage people to just move entirely to canvas or other types of reusable bags. Yeah, and that leads me to my next question. Where do you really think we're heading now um, with respect to plastic? Are we moving from plastic to bottles, bottles to plates? You know, we're, we're, forget about straws. That's a whole other issue. Where Are we removing all plastics? Where, where do you think we're heading here? Well, if we care deeply about the environment, not only, um, you know, wildlife, but the environment that we're living in and the, the big issue of the climate crisis, we will move away from single-use plastics. Um, you mentioned earlier about all the other plastics, like shampoo bottles, um, and other other products that we buy and then put them in our reusable bags now, we need to really rethink our use of these single-use plastics, whether it's straws, knives, forks, plates, uh, the bottles holding our detergent, and look more towards refillable containers. Um, we have a climate change crisis. We have a solid waste crisis. And part of it is just because it was cheaper, and cheaper often means dirtier. And now we're unfortunately seeing the the impacts of taking the cheaper and dirtier route. Let's talk a little bit more about your organization. We haven't really gotten to that. A little bit about some of the things that your organization stands for. What are you pushing lately? Um, give the viewers a little bit of a um, synopsis, if you could. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you, um, you asked. Um, love talking about my organization. But I, I also want to just say personally that I didn't say thank you for you doing this segment. I think it's really important. Um, and Environmental Advocates has been around for 50 years. We're a group that's based here in the state capitol in Albany, and we shape public policy. So we try to promote things that are going to be good for public health, the environment. And when people don't agree with uh, protecting the environment, we are the group that runs into this capitol and stops people from doing bad things that will harm the environment, whether it's you know, producing more air pollution, uh, generating more solid waste. So we work a lot with groups that are based in New York City, particularly on the whole issue of trying to get the, the diesel buses taken out of New York City's bus fleet, more money going into mass transit so we can move between point A and point B um, with greater surety and more <laughs> frequency. Uh, so we have more mass transit build out. Um, so we do a lot of those things, but it's all with a big, broad statewide agenda to improve public health and the environment. Is there a particular win that you're very proud of recently? Um, of course, this is a big win, I think, but is there something that you're particularly proud it's of? Definitely, it's definitely a big win because it can improve people's communities right away. But the big win that we achieved last year is uh, legislation that New York State is committed to move its entire economy, all segments, transportation, buildings, electric production, all segments of our economy are going to move off of fossil fuels uh, to lead on the issue in this country on addressing climate change. Um, oh. We're not seeing any of that leadership in Washington. In fact, we're seeing a lot of people moving back um, away from environmental protections in Washington. So New York State um, adopted very aggressive nation leading and some would argue world leading climate legislation last spring. And I'm really proud that our organization was at the forefront of the working on that. But we work with a lot of environmental justice and social justice and immigrant groups to get that law done last spring. And that was a a sea change on environmental legislation to have it coming from so many social justice groups as well as environmental groups. Well, let me ask so we're happy to be a part let, of that. Peter, let me ask you a question. Nationally, this is a big time politically for us. It, it really is. I mean, big debates tonight, a lot of stuff coming out. Um, how much of what happens in the upcoming election, the big one, big election uh, in November, really impacts in terms of environmental protections in, in, in your organization? Well, everything. Um, it's, it's, you know, it, I, we, we worried uh, when, when President Trump was elected that we would see massive rollbacks in our clean air standards, our clean water standards. He uh, viewed climate change as a hoax, and everything that we feared has come true. Time and time again, they're rolling back uh, sensible safeguards for our public health and environmental protections, and it's going to put not only our, our air quality and our water quality and our lands at risk, but it, it puts your health at risk. 
you mm -hmm. are going to breathe dirtier air because of what the Trump administration did in the first year, four years. You are going to breathe dirtier, uh, drink dirtier water because of what they've done. You, you have any predict so you have any predi the, the, you, the you, fall you elections are cruelly important. We need to, you know, bring people in into our nation's capital. They're going to have a stronger ethos for environmental protection and public health. Uh, so I assume just any, any candidate or at least the Democratic side would be better than than anybody on the, uh, than the ticket already in terms of uh, well, President Well, we're nonpartisan, but, you know, the, the, the Trump administration record stands for itself. We'll let the voters decide who should be in, in place, but I think people really should take seriously what's happened with this administration when they go into that voting booth. By the way, how, how are things up in Albany? Is it cold up there? It's always cold in Albany. That's uh, even I, in the middle of summer, it's cold. We like it that way here. Uh, you know, the the environment is great up here in Albany. The um, politics of the state capitol are really about pro-environment and pro-public health. Um, they're trying to improve the living conditions for everybody in New York City and elsewhere in the state. So it's a it's a good time to be working the issues that I work with day in and day so out. I want to be want to give a big shout out to Union College, my alma mater. <laughs> Love it. Miss it. <laughs> I didn't realize that. Yeah, I was a Siena guy myself. So, oh, okay. Yeah, I, I grew up outside of Boston and stayed here after falling in love with the area. So, gotta, gotta get uh, over maybe, the... maybe someday you'll come back. Absolutely. Please. I'd love to. All right. Anyway, thanks for being here, Peter. And uh, listen, good luck. And we'll see what happens with, uh, with the, debate, the debate tonight. All right? Indeed. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. on. My pleasure. All right. All right, well, that's all the time we have for today. I'd like to thank our guests for joining us and, of course, you, the viewers, for watching. If you missed any part of today's show, be sure to check it out at www.bronxnet.tv. Also remember, if there is a legal issue or topic you'd like to see on a future edition of Today's Verdict, feel free to contact me at davidlesh.bronxnet.org. Also tweet us at Today's Verdict and make sure to hashtag Ask Today's Verdict. For myself and all of us at the station, always remember, know your rights, know your issues, reach a verdict. We'll see you next time. Praise the Lord, I'm Evangelist Barbara Mayo. I have a program called The Great God. I come on every Saturday at 3.30, channel 70 and 36 on file. You need to catch me because it's a, current, uh, a program to encourage, to lift up, and if you don't know anybody that uh, 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 haven't heard about the program, tell them about it. They'll be encouraged, for God is good. God bless you. Thank mm -hmm. you.